Cool. Okay. Well, good morning, church. Uh, this is uh, Wednesday morning, and it's a uh, it's a great day. It's starting to warm up. I think summer is pretty much upon us, Joe. Yeah, officially starts in about two weeks. Yeah, yeah. But well, <laughs> begin to feel like it already. Yeah, in Yuma, I think it officially started here. First of May. <laughs> yes, it was pretty warm. Yeah, look, we have, uh, this morning we've been chatting a little bit about missions. Uh, you know, we've been doing, uh, we've been a mission church really pretty much since our inception, since uh, this church started. Uh, I was actually thinking back, and I think we have been doing mission conferences for about 45 years, I'm going to guess. Something like that, Joe? Pretty close, yeah. And uh, so, you know, uh, I know that, uh, you know, I've heard people say things like, well, you know, if you cut us, would bleed missions. And I think that's exactly right. Uh, you know, we just have a mission heart, the, the church. And of course, Pastor Joe and I have the, the privilege of pastoring this church right now. Uh, and so, you know, we, we just wanted to take a, a few minutes this morning and give a little bit of an update on missions, our missions partners. I don't really like calling them projects because they're people. And so, Joe, let's just kind of maybe go down through this uh, uh, list. Since this whole COVID-19 issue has been going on, it's been a little hard to uh, to really know exactly what's going on, but we have been getting some updates. Yeah, we've that. been getting reports from different ones. If this is, sometimes we, we hold everything close to ourselves. We think about how this is affecting us, but this is affecting everybody around the world. And we're hearing reports from well, from Cambodia and Cuba and other places that uh, it's severely affecting them. A lot of these people were barely hanging on, barely subsisting before this happened. Yes. And and now with this, with people losing their jobs, people not able to go places, uh, it's it's been a real disaster in some places. And we've done our best to try and help in, in those areas we can, especially in the, the with the people that we're already helping to support. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's this is affecting everybody. Yeah. I think it's also, it, it also kind of gives us a little view, a little peek into God's ability to meet needs in whatever situation, conditions we go through. Um, because, you know, we've been, God's been allowing us, as Pastor Joe just said, to help with, with some projects, with some things that they're doing, our partners are doing in their part of the world. Cambodia, uh, our, our church in Kampong Cham, uh, we've, I think this is our fourth year, something like that. I, I think believe our, so. It's been our, about four years we've been helping them. We've been partnering there, and uh, they are, at this point, to my knowledge, last conversation I had with, uh, you know, the pastors there, is they're not allowed, they're not, they're not open for services in the buildings. But they're reaching out. They're going house to house. Uh, I was just reading a report. Pastor Joe and I were just reading a port, report a minute ago. And they are providing food for those in their villages around in the roundabout areas. They've been gathering food. And uh, God's blessing. And so, you know, God takes a bad situation and he uses it. He didn't cause this, but he uses it. The thing that the enemy means for, for evil, God turns it around for good. And I know we sing that song. But it's a scriptural principle. Mm -hmm. When the devil, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard. He'll raise yeah. up a, 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 ba a, bar a barrier, a banner, whatever. He makes a way. And so Kempong Cham is, they are, uh, they're thriving under the circumstances still. And, uh, but I don't expect anything less. So, uh, Joe, what, how about, how about uh, Burundi? I know that, uh, we we received a request for a little bit of assistance there. Yeah, yeah, we've been helping uh, widows in Burundi. Uh, I don't know how many are familiar with uh, that area of the world in Africa, but uh, a number of years ago there was a, a civil war with genocide, and many people were killed and left a lot of widows. And we work with a ministry, we partner with a ministry called Sister Connection that helps these widows. Uh, in that country, widows have no rights. Mm -hmm. They're taken advantage of. Uh, most of or many of them are homeless. So for a number of years, we help provide finances to build homes for them. And for the, over there, you can build a home for about $600. Yeah. So we help build a number of homes over there. 
Uh, but this last year we transitioned more to, to supporting the widows. They, they give them training uh, and help them to establish a micro enterprise, maybe sewing or, or cooking or something like that, something that they can start a small business and, and support themselves with. And we've been able to help that. Uh, they needed a special offering to help with some of their administrative costs this year. Uh, and so we've, we've been able to help out with that. But uh, we've made a difference in a number of uh, widows' lives. We've gotten cards and certificates showing mm -hmm. uh, some of the people whose lives have been changed by what we've been able to do uh, through the church here. Yeah, they, you know, they're very, very industrious people. They're hardworking people, uh, and so to give them uh, help, and that's kind of what we're doing. We're just we're reaching out to, to them in that way. So uh, the work in Burundi, there in Africa, is is going forward. They're affected by the COVID nineteen issue as well. They've been giving us updates there as well. They're continuing to do ministry as best they can, and but there's a lot of people that do depend on them as well. So we're able to come alongside and help them still uh, because they're still going strong. They're still ministering. And, you know, when, when, the light or when the darkness becomes really, really dark, the light makes a big, big impact. And so we're believing that in the midst of all this, God is raising up and establishing, uh, you know, a light that people are going to be drawn to where there's hope, there's resources, there's opportunity. And so we want to say thank you, you know, church, uh, for partnering with along with us we're partnering we're partnering together as a church with with them and uh, we're going to continue working there uh, Joe yeah. talk a little bit about uh, about uh, Cuba I know that you gave me a report there uh, on what's going on with uh, Pastor Roque and his wife Carrie so what's happening okay. there? yeah we've been working with uh, Pastor Roque for a few years now uh, he's planning a church in a little village called La Serrana uh, this past year, uh, just about a year ago, in fact, we were able to provide a couple of motorcycles for them because they were uh, without transportation and it really slowed down their work. So fortunately, we were able to help them out to, to, to get motorcycles. Uh, they've had to s uh, stop doing services too, just like so many places. And, you know, here in the States, we can do, as we've been doing, doing online services, but they don't have the facilities for that. They don't have the equipment, and the country doesn't have the Internet service. They do have Internet, but not adequate to do online services. So what they've been doing is sending uh, emails on a regular basis. Several people in the village uh, have access to email, so they send lessons by email. Mm. Uh, they have been able to go around a few times and visit uh, individuals, but also with what we're able to help them with, they've been able to help them out with material things, food. Uh, again, some of these people were barely making it when, when, before all this started, mm -hmm. and of course this just made things even worse for them. So Roki and his wife Kari have been helping out with food and clothing and things, uh, material things. And that's, that's part of it, you know. The, our, our main goal, of course, is to get the gospel out. But when people are in need, right. that's, that becomes an imp important, important part. Priority. They can't really pay attention, let's just say it that way. Uh, when you're hurting, when you're hungry, yeah. when you feel destitute, uh, you know, it's almost like you're being talked to about something like, you know, heaven and, and eternal life. And those are important things, but it's like, but right now... This is what's yeah, going on right, right now. now. I'm hungry. I'm yeah. starving. So we, we, you know, we do have to f meet physical needs yeah. too. And uh, even Jesus did, you know, he fed the people, mm -hmm. but then he preached the gospel. And, you know, our, our ultimate goal is to see people come to accept yeah. Jesus as Lord and Savior. But sometimes you have to get, uh, you reach their heart through their stomach, you might say. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we've got several things on here. A Destiny Rescue, we continue uh, with the, the, the rescue home in, it's actually in Hyderabad. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where. Uh, it's because, in central India. Yes. And so basically we're working with uh, Destiny Rescue there, and they're doing everything that they can to reach in and to rescue uh, these children. Uh, men and women, young men and young women that are trapped in, uh, 
in the sex industry. And a lot of them are kidnapped and put into that. And anyway, it's a bad, bad situation. But Destiny Rescue, I'm telling you, those guys are, I mean, they're like, they're my heroes. They go into places and they do so much work. They reach in. They have to set up the process to get these uh, young people out. Or these, some of them are not so young, but I mean, most of them are. That's true. Most of them are young kids. Yeah. And and it's it's a serious business. I mean, yeah. it's it's a dangerous it's thing. That, yeah, it's a dangerous thing that these guys do that go in and rescue them because the people that are handling these young kids, their this is their their livelihood, and they make a lot of money off of it. Yeah. So when somebody comes in and starts messing with it, they're not happy. But uh, Destiny Rescue has been able to rescue thousands of young girls and boys out of out of the sexual trade slave trade well they do that and and then they also have a uh, an aftercare where they give them training they teach them uh, a skill uh, and they basically help them with uh, the ability to get ministry uh, you know I can't imagine how scarred and how you know emotionally devastated these these people are some of them are actually sold into that situation by their own parents that's true, and, and so and to just rescue them out of it and then just turn them loose, they'd probably wind up back in the yeah. same position because uh, that's the only way they know to make money. But Destiny Rescue uh, trains them, helps them to learn a trade, just like we we're talking about the the widows in Burundi that they they teach them a trade and help them get established, but they also uh, help them to get healing and and they preach the gospel to them. It's not. Uh, they're not forced into Christianity, they're not forced into anything, but they're given the opportunity to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and they're also trained and, and helped to start on a new, whole new way of life. Yeah, when Jesus says he gives us new life, sometimes it takes people around to help people to guide them uh, into what that looks like and to continue to be their support system. Um, you know, I know we, we have several other things, but let's talk briefly uh, about one last thing. And let's take a minute and pray for, for at least these. We've got several more. But uh, we, we actually have a, uh, a work that we're supporting in Indonesia with Pastor uh, Paulos. And uh, we actually are, uh, we've come alongside Paulos, and we were hoping to do a mission conference this year. And Paulos was supposed to be here this month, but due to the circumstances, he's not able to. We're rescheduling to have him here. I believe it's in October. But uh, there is a village uh, in, I listen, there are so many islands in Indonesia. But there's one specific place where Pastor Paulus's team, they located a village. And it was ap- actually a leper colony. Right. And uh, he sent out um, an appeal to churches and asking if if any churches would be willing to partner and of course we absolutely so we began uh, helping with that and we're still waiting to to meet with Paulos um, to, to move forward on that but we've already helped in that particular area but it's a village where people were sent out to and they basically are you have to want to go there I think uh, Paulo said you have to take a boat then you take a Jeep and then you walk. And you walk for a while. Yeah. And when you get there, he said he didn't know what to expect. They didn't know what to expect. But when they found this place, they said there were tons and tons of children. Because people go out there and they, they live. They have families. And it just it thrived into a, a little village. But um, taking hope to that is, to me, I would say that is an absolute Jesus heart ministry. Uh, you talk about the forgotten and the... Those that are so far out there, how do you ever reach them? That's one thing that, that uh, Pastor Paulos and Marlisha and their team do. They go f- for whatever they can. They go as far as they can. And so we're, we're partnering with them in, in that uh, monthly. We're doing a monthly support there. And uh, so, Joe, do you have anything else you want to share? Because we got several things, but uh, let's take a minute and pray. Because we're, we're already pretty well down the road on our time. We don't want to take... Too much yeah. more time. Right? I just want to say I appreciate the, the, the people of our congregation. They've kept yeah. up their giving, so we've been able to continue to help these people. Uh, I know a lot of people are struggling here, too, but uh, our people stay generous, and they're still helping us to, to help these people because 
you and I can't do it by yeah. ourselves, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. And so our people have been faithful, and, and we appreciate that. And I know these people do. These people, they're, uh, they're very, some of them, their very lives depend upon what we can, we can help Absolutely, them with. Joe. Yeah. You know, I was thinking before we prayed, Jesus, Jesus said, you know, I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was naked, I was sick, mm -hmm. and I was in prison. And you, you ministered to me, you met my need. And as best we can, that's our goal, is to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. Uh, and there's other uh, partners and, and things that we're doing, but we'll, we'll hit those on maybe the next podcast. But let's take a minute. If you'll join us, and let's take a minute, because God's arm's not short, and he can reach right into those places from right here in Yuma, Arizona, from your home, from right here in this office where we sit. Let's pray. Well, Father, we do thank you today that you, are, you care about every individual. You care about every person, uh, Lord, that is, that is so far uh, removed from society or so far removed from civilization. Uh, maybe they're on an island. Maybe they're in a, in a place where they're absolutely cut off from anything. But, Lord, you hear their cry. And, Lord, you let us have ears to hear their cry. And so, Father, we pray for them. We pray for all of these uh, ministries there in Cambodia, there in Burundi, uh, in, in, South, uh, in Eastern Europe, uh, God, in India, those in, uh, in Indonesia, God, all their faithful men and yes. women and their teams. We pray for them. Give them grace and wisdom. Meet every need that they have. God, uh, open the windows of heaven and pour out blessing. And, God, thank you for letting us be a part of it. And let every heart be open to receive yes. the gospel you, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Church, thank you Amen. so much Jesus. for for praying Amen. with us, for for standing with us. Uh, we stand together to get the gospel to perishing people. That's what we're called to do. That's what we're all about. We love you. God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you on Sunday. If you don't feel comfortable coming, it's all good. We're still going to be live streaming. God bless you.